Hey, this is Richard with Richard Runs Trails. Uh, I want to give a race recap on the Texas Endurance Run 48 Hours. So, took place in Fort Worth, Texas. I got up there around 4.30 on Friday, set up my cot and my little aid station outside, which I eventually moved inside to AC because there was mosquitoes and stuff. But race started around 6 o'clock. Uh, pretty good turnout because there was also 24 hour racers out there. Crazy hot. It was probably 102, 103, something like that. Um, we had to deal with the heat for until about nine o'clock. Um, race got started. Uh, surprised me that I was actually in the front of the pack. Uh, I turned around and waited for someone to catch up. I was only running about a 10 minute mile and uh, I got hooked up with someone that had experience on the course. I just w wanted to make sure I went the right way on the first lap. <clears throat> um, I was very well heat acclimated, but the heat really affected me in the first couple of laps. On the third lap, I threw up. After that, I felt pretty good. Hydration-wise, I was drinking uh, BPN GR1. Um, it's okay. I'm just trying to use it up. I've done a review on that one before. I was using uh, Hammer Heed, which was provided by the race. It's pretty good stuff. I used it many years ago. And I've also also was using LM, LMNT 1000. So I had a big bottle of that that I was drinking um, probably eight ounces of every couple of laps. That stuff is really strong. It's like drinking ocean water. It's pretty salty. Um, once the nighttime came around, I took off my shirt and I, uh, I basically ran uh, no shirt, no hat all night long. It, it got a little bit cooler, like the high 80s, and it felt pretty good actually. The nice thing about this was uh, it was a 1.25 mile loop, so I could carry a small bottle and nothing else. So at night I had my handheld Nathan light and my bottle and it worked well for me um, the first night you know it's just a night start and I get up at five six o'clock in the morning every day so I did get a little tired the first night but I only slept maybe 15 minutes just took a, a really quick 15 minute nap and then I was up and going and I think this helped me a lot because I got I got ahead of my uh, a lot of my colleagues and friends uh, out there on the course because they slept more than I did. And uh, at the end of the race, I was uh, the first one to reach 100 miles. So I was pretty excited about that. I wasn't the fastest person on the course, but I just managed my time better than the other people on the course. Uh, one of my friends, Mari Flores, she was very fast and uh, fast the whole, the whole two days probably the strongest runner on the course. She, she also did very well. I saw my friend Jay from the old Ultra Runner channel. Uh, he was doing great as well. It was nice to see him. And then I met some new friends. So I was talking about the hydration. Um, so Friday night went pretty well. Saturday, I had stomach problems all day. I'm not sure why. I, I'm using the same hydration the same type of nutrition that I've used in other high heat races and never had an issue but um, during the day I was I was almost going to the toilet every lap it was terrible um, so I had stomach problems all day Saturday and it continued into Sunday got a little more manageable on Sunday I ate some ice cream and uh, and just tried different things to try to make it better but you know Basically, I had an empty stomach most of the time. I couldn't hold too much food down. I did eat, I did eat some pizza on Saturday night and Friday night, um, but other than that, I was drinking liquid calories the whole race. Um, one thing I did, it was so hot, uh, half the course was asphalt, and I have a video of the, uh, the uh, complete course at the end of this video, so please stay tuned and check that out. But half the course was asphalt, half the course was gravel, some had big rocks, and some had was like a pebble uh, jeep road. Well, 
I was wearing Hoka Mach 5s, which are road shoes. And I think the high heat on the asphalt was affecting the shoe because it just, something didn't feel right. And plus the gravel and the rocks didn't feel too good. I've run trail ultra marathons in Mach 5s before and I thought this would be a good match, but uh, I changed my shoes at around mile 25. That's the first time in an, I've done over 50 ultras and this is the first time I've ever changed shoes in an ultra. But I'm glad I did. At mile 25, I changed to my Hoka Speed Goat 5s trail shoes and I used those the rest of the race. So uh, going into Saturday night, um, I was real excited because it was crazy hot again on Saturday during the day. I took my shirt off, my hat off, and uh, both days I was using SPF 100. I don't know if you've used SPF 100 before, but it's almost like lacquer paint. And I think that affects your cooling some. And then I had quite a bit of uh, off on to keep the bugs off of me. So I had a lot of deed on me. Anyways, went shirtless and uh, hatless again on uh, Saturday night. But Saturday night wasn't as cool as uh, Friday night and it was more humid. I think it didn't get down out of the mid 90s. It felt not that cool all night. And then Sunday came up uh, Sunday daytime was very hot. It seemed like it was hotter than uh, um, Saturday. So I kept going to about 2 o'clock and then I called it quits. My family picked me up. Uh, the race went on to 6 o'clock. I ended up with 84 laps. Um, I don't know if that was the most anybody had, but I didn't really care. Um, I, I was the first person to 100 miles and I felt pretty good about that and uh, um, I was I was running against some very good runners uh, a couple of which uh, DNF'd that were ahead of me in, uh, on, on Saturday morning. Saturday morning I was in third place but by the time Sunday came around I was the first person to hit 100 miles and I actually did it I was several laps ahead of them when I hit uh, 100 miles, so um, I attribute that to my sleep management. On Saturday night, I only slept maybe 45 minutes. So some of the people that were running faster than me, they just slept more. They slept several hours, so that's how I was able to get to 100 miles the fastest. Um, overall, I think it's a great race. Uh, if you like to do loop races, the race directors, the Rath Racing, um, maybe one of the best in the area. Uh, reminds me of the race directors at, um, in Arkansas for Love It. Just very family oriented, really cared about the runners. Um, the awards that they gave were really nice. Some of them were handmade by um, uh, the race director. So really, really nice, nicely done. The photographer, the best photographer I've seen at any race, um, is a young girl, college student. She was even out there at one in the morning taking pictures. I've never seen any uh, photographer doing that. So that was really well done. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about the race. The only negative I had about the race is the timekeeping or the uh, clock management. The company that was doing it um, I think their timing system, this is my opinion, their timing system is better for a point-to-point -point race or um, a rate, yeah, just basically a point-to-point. -point. There was only one timing mat and they had like six antennas. I mean, it looked like overkill. But for some reason, the thing I didn't like about it is there's no handshake with the runner. Every time I cross the timing mat, there's nobody there to say, okay, or there was no beeping noise. Usually when you cross a timing mat, there's a beeping noise. You know, the, si the system's giving you a handshake. Yes, you, we, we got you, we counted you. There was none of that. And I wasn't gonna spend the time at, you know, every mile and a quarter to ask if, if I made it or not because the, the timer was behind it in a tent. Well, why is this, why am I bringing this up? Well, halfway through the race, I was about six miles my GPS watch, which is a Garmin Phoenix 6X, it's a very nice watch. Um, I race all the time, I know how accurate it is. 
I was five miles up on the timer and this was on Saturday and I asked about it and uh, they said no you're it's time it's counting you correctly um, anyways by the end of the race at the end of the race I had 84 laps which is about 105 miles I think if I remember right but my GPS watch had 115 so I was 10 miles my watch was 10 miles up on the on the clock system uh, something that that's that's a too much of a difference in my experience uh, point to point races uh, generally the watch might be ahead one or two miles like in a hundred miler but if it's a tight course where there's single track that gets close together or it's winds a lot uh, usually the GPS will be short this course which you'll see in the end of the video half one part of it is an out and back so it's tight so m what I'm, my point is my watch should have been uh, a few miles less than the timing system not 10 miles ahead of the timing system I would have expected it if the timing system had 105 I would have expected my watch on this course just from experience on how it works on tight courses to be maybe one mile short one mile or two miles short because it's like close single track there was an out and back that was basically the same trail so I'm pretty confident there was something wrong with the timing system now I looked at my Strava and if I ha if I ever do a course like this again I will set my watch to exactly the distance of the loop so it's easier to check it out but my my watch was uh, counting loops at one mile increments well this course is 1.25 so I'd have to really unwind my Strava file and check it out but it's not worth my time I don't care it's not that big of a deal my point is uh, I think there was some some issue with the timing system and that can be improved but overall this was a great race and a great race director maybe one of the best I've, I've run and I've seen probably 20 plus race directors in my experience all over the US and uh, they really did a great job